y'all. Let me start by introducing myself. My name is Wes White here at Tick Creek Ranch. We're social media content creators and we do all kinds of stuff here on the acreage. We operate on 192 acres and as you can see we got some timber here on our land. So roughly two years ago I started working on a proof of concept. Now here we are many months later and what you see before you is what we call the log hopper. I saw it as an opportunity to hopefully design something and maybe some would say reinvent the wheel but it's a combination of a skitter slash logging arch. I feel that it really can help fill a need or a hole that's in the market and for some of you folks out there. Now this is by no means going to replace a tractor. If you want or need a tractor, I'm not telling you you should even consider this. This is a very specialized piece of equipment for a very specialized application. Where the genesis of this came from is that I'm very ecologically and biologically conscious, whether it be our pastures, our cattle, our horses, or the forest floor. I like to tread really light. I don't like to leave any trace if I can. So so that's kind of where this all came from. We're gonna go around and show you the features and functions of this, and I'd love your feedback. All right, so we're gonna start with the heart of the beast here. What we got here is a mile marker, 5,000 pound winch, and it does come with a full spool of wire. Now, we're gonna send it out like that to anybody who purchases it, but I would actually recommend, unless you plan on yarding with this thing, and if you do that, you're gonna probably want to add an external battery on top of this unit. I wouldn't wanna rely on the small battery that's on your ATV, four-wheeler, side-by-side, whatever you got, to be running this winch in a continuous fashion for long pulls. So this wire here, I'll actually probably trim it down to about 20 feet. It'll give us less wraps on the spool. It'll make the job of the winch a lot easier and you won't have so much problem with biting and pinching cable it'll be a lot easier to flat wrap so that being said this is how it will come it comes with its own wiring harness that you would just add to your side-by-side -side atv and then you'll be able to plug it in directly and run off the battery of the machine that you're pulling it with here we've got some grade 75 16 chain and you can see we got three chain keepers on either side the chain keeper is designed for just that okay i do not recommend, don't ever, ever suspend the load or the log off of these chain keepers. The only reason I say that, it's not the integrity or any problem here that we would be worried about. It would be this. So if someone is rigging this up, puts their hand in here like this, and the load comes loose, it will cut your fingers off. This is a terrible pinch point. So these are not for carrying load. Chain hooks, boom. That's how you'll suspend your load. Okay, let's talk about what makes this machine more unique than pretty much anything on the market. Um, this is not a new design, and I'm not intending to say this is my own conception. This is a very standard mechanical feature on a lot of trailers and or military vehicles throughout the world. I think a lot of you would know what a walking beam suspension is, especially considering if you've ever been around a logging truck, a Hendrickson suspension or the like. So we've just adapted that to a 3,500 pound stub shaft here. These are 5 8 plate, and this is all laser cut and these spindles which are all greasable mind you these spindles are rated at 1100 pounds the tires are rated at a thousand pounds so we are giving this machine a 3000 pound rating i don't recommend going higher than that but i know how you guys use your equipment you can see this is pretty self-explanatory we've got deflectors and then we also got chain keepers on the side here now what will we use these for well these are designed to be able to create a cradle or or run a chain over the top of your log so if your log is butt heavy and you're grabbing it from the top of the tree and it naturally wants to lift the front of the log when you pick it with the winch well you can throw a chain over the front and you'll be able to carry a butt heavy log out you'll take obviously weight off the tow vehicle and you'll have to take that in consideration or we can cradle we can throw the chain underneath the log and just lift set the front of the log reset our tongs and lift the back of the log so now you're probably wondering what this contraption is. Well, this is what we call our trolley. This machine is designed to run many different features and functions. You should be able to yard with it lightly. You're gonna also have the, the feature of a standard log arch where you're gonna be able to cradle and carry your log out. And you're gonna be able to take and move logs with unlimited length. You'll be able to move pecker poles and tree length logs as long as they're not heavier than the machine can handle by using this trolley system. So what we got here is a pin. It's got three positions different heights you can run it if you want to cradle your log from the front and hang from there but this operation is going to allow you to back over your log connect this hook to the choker on your log and as you pull forward this is going to run up stop at the back and then drag your log out from behind you it works really great on really long trees again pecker poles you know light logs i've pulled a i've drug around a 40 foot log that was about oh, 16 inches at the butt, 18 inches. It can do more. 
Uh, that's just something I did with it. You gotta make sure your choker chain is tight enough and you don't have too much tag in to make sure that the log is high enough. So when the machine articulates and the log comes out at a obtuse angle, it's not interfering with your tire. That is another feature of these really short tires. People might ask, well, why four tires instead of just two? Well, a walking beam suspension is a class two lever. It allows you to traverse over obstacles much easier with a heavy load. So as you can see, for any of those that don't understand, you'll see how the lifting mechanism works here. As I pick up on this tire, I will effectively only be lifting half of the weight of this unit because half will be on there. The same goes for when this crawls over a stump or log. See how easy that is? This unit weighs just under 600 pounds and I can easily lift that. So now you can understand how little upward force has to be applied to this tire to effectively lift this to allow the tire to traverse over set obstacles. So in some of our prototype videos, we had some people say, oh great, now you got four tires to get flats instead of two and blah, blah, blah. It increases your chances of getting a flat in the force. Well, if you're gonna go by that adage, you might as well run a unicycle and get rid of your car. That way you don't have more tires in the way. Any rate, let's say for instance, we get a flat tire here. Well, how do we get out of the forest if it's truly gonna run off the bead? Well, we'll show you, it's pretty simple. Go ahead and remove your cradle chain here and we can run it right around the axle. We're gonna say that this back tire is now flat. And this is just a demonstration. You're going to take said chain and we're falling over. <laughs> well, now your tire's off the ground. Now you can run out on a single. You're not gonna run this off its bead. You can do the same thing to both sides. If you wanna feed this trailer in over a log, in a really hard spot to back into. We'll repeat the same process over here. All right, so now both are off the ground. Mind you, now we just changed the center of balance of this machine because we moved it forward from here to the center of this axle, which takes an incredible amount of weight off of the tongue. So it becomes much lighter and easier to handle and wheel around. All right, so if you're not too good at backing up, you can always do this. trip on a stick while you're at it. And you could position this over your log, bring your machine in and connect. Okay, let's come to the front here. This is the really important part. Um, put a lot of time, effort, and thought into how to make this work to where it's very strong and very safe for the end user. So if you get an apparatus like this behind you, I'm sure you know as well as I do, but you manage to flip this thing over. Well, if this goes over and it's connected to the ball and your four wheeler, what do you think is gonna happen? You're gonna roll and it's gonna be bad. So what did we do here? We created a swiveling tongue. This is greasable. Here you go, your grease zert. This is a one inch grade eight shaft, passes all the way through DOM tubing, that's quarter wall thickness. Three eighths here in the gusset plate, you can see you have a handle. And then obviously your power wire that is gonna run your winch and will connect to the back of your four wheeler. Beautiful. So that takes the safety factor and uh, ups it a lot. You know, in the initial phases and testing, I was doing some really kind of radical and dumb stuff, right? Well, that's R&D. Driving as fast as I could and trying to flip my trailer. I never was actually successful, but it's possible. And I know there's guys out there that'll take bigger chances than me. So this is for that oh shit factor and it should keep you out of harm's way. We'll demonstrate that later. I'll go ahead and throw this thing over on its side down in the pasture. So this takes us to the next part. This machine does not come with log tong. Well, we opted not to do that because everybody's needs for logging tongs and sizes are very, very different. So you might say, well, one size fits all, but that's not been my experience. So what I got here is I have a set of 25 inch and 18 inch. I find I use these more, but when you need these, you just gotta have them. As you can see, here's your throat. It'll handle up to almost a 31 inch log. We call it 30 because you're gonna need a little wiggle room, obviously. You can also see here we have deflectors. So when you're backing in and if your guy limbing the log, which is probably you, didn't limit too well, well, you don't have a sharp abutment here that just slams into and stops you. We figured that one out real fast. The first limb stub that I backed into and it stopped me dead in my tracks. Well, we added those. So as you can see, we have almost tripled the effective thickness of that 5 8 plate. That 5 8 plate has zero deflection, zero measured deflection when it's being operated. So major improvement, 3 8 plate, 3 8 tubing. This is three inch pipe. And then let's look up in here, Tristan, last but not least, we have an anchoring point for a shackle here. You can run a snatch block on here to take some load off of your winch if you need to. All right, you can see our wire passes through our upper tube, comes out all the way to the front. So it's direct shot, no splices. Let's get this thing hooked up and uh, we're gonna go grab a log.
So we're here on the trail for demonstration purposes. It's kind of hard out in the brush. It's hot as hell and we're getting covered in ticks. So we're gonna be babies and do it right here and it'll be a lot easier to explain and show. This is an old Southern yellow pine log. Uh, it was cut about a year and a half ago, so it has lost some moisture content, but it's still very heavy, I can assure you. We've been using this through the R&D process. This is one of our sacrifice, our dirty logs. We drugged this thing and beat it and everything else. So, really, yeah. All right, so we're about 22 inches by 24. It's a really balanced log. Uh, we use this so we wouldn't be cherry picking during the design of something that was extremely front heavy, giving us a skewed idea of actually how this would work. So we wanted the log to be balanced so we couldn't say, oh yeah, we can carry 24 foot logs because the butt was this big and the top was that big, right? All right, here we got a seven foot choker, slip hook and a needle. Now, if you can't needle and feed under this, and you're not gonna be able to get it because you're on too perfectly flat of ground, which I could right there and that worked. But if you can't, we're gonna show you how you would go ahead and feed that. Here, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do a bad job of backing up. As you can see, it just slips over. Now don't let the trailer roll your leg over because it will pull four-wheeler and the trailer back, as you can see. So stand outside of your tires. It's like 94 to a million percent humidity. We didn't come here to listen to me whine. Pull that, I like to just drop that in there. Uh, this creates a little bit of a pendulum effect. Now I'm gonna try, first time, I'm just gonna pull forward, I'm gonna see if it's gonna run up. And if it won't, because we lose traction or the log skids, then we go to plan B. That works dandy. So now I'm just gonna take this pin, Drop it in the desired hole. As you get more used to this machine, you'll be able to eyeball it and know where and when and how, which one of those holes you're gonna use. So. There we go. All right, now you can see the logs off the ground up front. What is that? Eight, 10 inches. It's gonna come up higher and I'll show you why. Now we go ahead and set our tongs back. Okay, so now we're scoped out. You're gonna see as we start winching up, it's gonna drive the log forward once again, standing out of the way of your wheel so you don't get run over. All right, so the other way, we'll just go ahead and stretch out our tongs, hook it on the trolley. Winch her up, drop your pin. So go ahead and lift this guy up. Stay very clear. Obviously, you can see these tongs are just barely holding on. So we don't want to be playing with that. Remember, never put your fingers in a pinch point area. So hang your chains from underneath. If it comes down hard on it. You won't get pinned. Rest it down. You got it. All right, Tristan, my cameraman, he's going to go ahead and hold this tape. And let's look at the length of this log and see what we got. So what we had, remember, is 22 by 24. On average, both ends of this log. So we're gonna call it a 23 inch diameter log by 16 too long. Let's go drive this thing around and take it over some stuff. Let's see what happens. demonstrate crawling over obstacles so there's an old nasty stuff it's a pretty big one
All right, so I'm gonna dump this thing over. We're gonna see how that swivel on the front works. I'll give myself a hernia. All right, folks. Well, we appreciate you sticking around. If you'd like any more information, go ahead and reach out to us at www.tickcreekranch.com or you can always get us at our email at tickcreekranch417 at gmail.com. So that's it from us here at Tick Creek Ranch and we'll catch you on the next one.